A rose is a rose is a rose. But is a rice a rice a rice? No. <laughs> when it's wild rice, what is wild rice? Well, despite its name, it's not a rice. It's a seed. It's the seed of an aquatic grass. Now, this grass grows in water, like rice, so it sort of looks like a rice patty, but it's not really rice. Um, this is a Minnesotan thing. It's native to the central and upper Great Lakes region of this country in the lakes and rivers of Minnesota. In fact, it's the state grain of Minnesota, and it's uniquely American. It's the only cereal grain that's native to, to the North American continent. And for hundreds of years, it was the staple in the diet of the uh, Indians in that part of the country, the Chippewa and the Sioux Indian tribes. Now, traditionally, it was harvested only once a year in the fall by Indians in canoes, something like this. And they would glide along in the lakes and the rivers, and one Indian would guide the canoe through the stands of wild rice, while the other, his or her partner, would bend the stands with a knocking stick and with a second stick, thrash the ripe seeds into the bottom of the boat. So this thing would double as a kind of uh, primitive harvester as well. Uh, OK, I hope you can deal with this. Wild rice is really not rice. Now that you've got that absorbed, can you deal with this? Wild rice is mostly today not wild. You see, the, the rice is now mostly cultivated. Now, it happens in, in rice paddies where they've planted it in north central Minnesota, but it also happens a lot in California. And this new type of thing, this uh, unwild rice, is harvested and processed mechanically. Harvested uh, in the early fall or the late summer. And uh, Minnesota is still the largest wild rice producer in the world. But the majority of the 12 million pounds processed annually is cultivated now in man-made patties. So we've left the wild thing behind. There, it, there are about a million pounds of rice, like one twelfth of the uh, of the national production, that is still hand harvested. Now let me show you. Uh, well, let's look at the difference. This stuff right here is from Minnesota. You can see it. Here's the label right behind it. And uh, actually, you probably can't read Minnesota, but it says it. Uh, this stuff is hand harvested. This stuff over here is it says California on this label, and this stuff is um, is mechanic is is not wild and is mechanically harvested. Uh, this is cultivated rice. There's a difference in color between them. This one is a kind of light brown with a little greenish cast, and this one is a rather dark brown. But you know, it doesn't make any difference. Um, they're the same in quality, they're the same in eating quality. And the size of the grain doesn't reflect quality either. Some grains are short and plump, others are long and slender. Um, it, it sort of depends on your aesthetic, whether you'd like it to look one way or another. But basically, they taste the same and they feel the same in the mouth. The price per pound varies wildly, but you can spend as much as $10 or $12 a pound for wild rice. The hand harvested is going to be more expensive. Um, that's just because I think of a kind of snob appeal. I mean, you, it's nice to say, this is hand harvested from Minnesota, as opposed to this is cultivated and mechanically harvested from California. But as I said before, you know, the taste is really not going to be uh, any different. Uh, of course, one option that you have when you're dealing with wild rice, you know, wild rice has this very nutty taste. That's its, that's its beauty. And it has this kind of uh, chewy texture. Um, you can get that taste and texture if you blend the expensive wild rice with the other kinds of rice, with real rice that's cheaper. Here we have two commercial blends that are on the market, a long grain and wild rice pilaf and a long grain and wild rice original. Um, and this is how they've cooked up. Now, these blends are about 85% real rice and about 15% wild rice. Uh, but, you know, the taste of the wild rice is so strong that you still get that nutty flavor in these blends. And also, it makes a nice contrast with the other textures. So every once in a while, you chew into one of those crunchy, chewy wild rice grains, and it really does stand out. Um, now, traditionally, wild rice is used as, you know, we usually see it at holiday time, at Thanksgiving and at Christmas, and it's an accompaniment to wild fowl, like uh, pheasant and wild duck, and we use it a lot alongside turkey if we're well off that year. Uh, we also use it as a stuffing ingredient, we Americans. But it is much more versatile than its traditional limited uses suggest. 
Here's something that I became aware of a couple of years ago. This is like the day after Thanksgiving. You made your turkey, you had the wild rice on the side. You make a leftover turkey soup with wild rice. It's a fabulous soup. I love this. I like this better than I like the wild rice with the turkey on Thanksgiving Day. You could also make a cold salad out of leftover wild rice. This one is mixed with some carrots and some bell peppers and some pecans, which are very good with wild rice. You could also make rice pudding with wild rice. We did a rice pudding show recently, and we made a wild rice pudding, and I loved it. I mean, that nutty taste that the wild rice contributes is uh, fabulous in rice pudding. Let me give you another idea. This is something that I became aware of recently that I'm really excited about. You can puff it up and use it as a garnish. Now, what you do is you rinse it and you dry it, and then you cook it in olive oil in a pan, saute it in olive oil. And you'll, you cook it stirring till most of the grains have cracked open and puffed slightly. Drain it on paper towel, get the oil off, and then salt and pepper it to taste. And it's, it's almost like popcorn. Oh, man, I love that. It's like the, you know those hard little brown ones in the popcorn that haven't popped entirely, but they have such a great flavor, but they sort of break your teeth? This is easier to chew than that. It has that same wonderful, wild, burnt kind of nutty flavor. And this I would use, watch, take some of this and use it just as a garnish. Like, watch me garnish this soup with this stuff right here. Just sprinkle it on, and it's almost like croutons, like wild rice croutons almost. It gives a great um, crunch on top of the soup. Really good idea. I want you to try that. Also, you can take your uncooked wild rice and um, grind it in a blender. And then you can use this as a flour in baked goods like breads and muffins and pancakes. I would substitute about a quarter of the flour required in the original recipe with this powdered wild rice stuff, and you get a great nutty flavor. Now, before we go away for a moment, let me just tell you basically how to cook it if you're just making the basic wild rice. First, you clean it thoroughly. Just take it out of the package. And um, if it's hand harvested, you need to clean it and take out any impurities that are in it. You need to wash it. If it's cultivated, you don't really need to, uh, to wash it. But this is uh, the hand harvested. And I'm just going to dip it in water. <clears throat> And that's it. You just want to you know, sort of uh, clean it off a little bit. And then you're ready to go. Uh, the water may turn gray as you put this. So this one is not, but it may turn gray. If that happens, don't worry about it. That's a naturally occurring grain dust. And it doesn't mean that the rice is dirty. Now, how do you cook it? Well, it's somewhat the same as cooking rice. You know, rice you usually cook in a proportion of two cups of liquid to one cup of rice. This you need more liquid. You need three to four cups of liquid to one cup of rice. Um, and you combine that together, bring it to a boil, uh, then down to a simmer, put the lid on, and you might want to cook it for 35 to 40 minutes. You could also cook it like pasta in a tremendous amount of water. But I think in this case, there's so much flavor in the wild rice that the tremendous amount of water will wash away the nutty flavor. So it's best to cook it in the proper proportion. One cup wild rice, three to four cups of liquid. I like to cook it in water because then I'm not interfering with the nutty flavor of the rice. But some people like to cook it in chicken stock or beef stock. You get a deeper flavor, but it's not exactly the wild rice flavor. Well, those are the basics. Um, as you now know, a traditional way of life has floated off in a canoe. But fortunately, wild rice grows on. And I will go on in a moment with more than a handful after this. Hello, my name is Peter Prescott, and I'd like to invite you to a special TV Food Network presentation, the Food and Wine Magazine Classic at Aspen. Every weekend, I'll be your host for an all-star culinary happening, wine tastings, cooking demonstrations, and lively discussions. You'll meet the masters, Julia Child, Jacques Pepin, Frank Pryor, as they share their delicious secrets at this Super Bowl of the gastronomic world. Tonight at 2.30 a.m., Citrus Sections, brought to you by the Florida Orange Growers. 100% pure Florida orange juice. It makes you feel so good. Hello, I'm Jamie Colby, and it's time to add some refreshment to your day with another Citrus Section. When I work out, I need to know there's a little something waiting for me when I'm through. A reward of some kind to keep me motivated. And because I know how important it is to replenish fluids after a tough aerobics class or weight training session, making myself a delicious orange protein shake accomplishes both of these goals. I never mind going that extra mile when I know I can top off my workout with this refreshing drink. In a blender, I've already blended a quarter of a cup of raw cashews, one cup of orange juice, and ice. Then all I do is add one banana cut into chunks, 
and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Process all of the ingredients until smooth. And then you'll pour it into a glass for a protein, vitamin C, and potassium rich drink that you'll enjoy not only after exercising, but even as an afternoon snack. That looks great. You can garnish with an orange slice. Citrus juices add both flavor and good health to your life, so keep plenty of citrus on hand. See you tomorrow for another refreshing citrus section. Right now, John Morrison isn't thinking about cancer or the medical studies that conclude foods rich in vitamin C, like Florida orange juice, may actually help lower the risk of some types of cancer. So while he may not know it, he's doing something good for his body every morning. Even on those days he's just not able to exercise. 100% pure Florida orange juice. To your health. Well, there's the wild rice cooked, and you see when it cooks, it explodes. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explode the tradition of wild rice on the side of game, served alongside of game. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make wild rice pancakes, and I'm going to serve some gamey type of thing on top of it. In fact, it's wild rice pancakes with slices of uh, rare duck breast. It's really it's a great dish and a great way to use wild rice to make it. You would start in the usual way. I've got a heavy saucepan here, and I'm going to add to this heavy saucepan uh, a cup of wild rice, which I've got. I'm using the hand harvested Minnesota rice, in case you're interested. And I'm going to add to this three cups of water. Remember, I told you before, one cup wild rice to three cups of water. Uh, by the way, if you have a pound of wild rice, uh, it's going to uh, make about 20 cups of cooked wild rice. A pound of raw wild rice will make 20 cups of cooked wild rice, which is enough for, to serve about 10 people. Nice gathering for Thanksgiving or Christmas. Uh, to this, I'm also going to add a teaspoon of salt. And then you uh, bring that up to a boil, and then lower it down to a simmer, and cover it. And you would cook it until it gets like this all exploded, but just exploded, just when it's exploded. You don't want it to cook longer because then it'll get too soft. And this could take you 35 minutes, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, 50 minutes. Whenever your rice chooses to explode, that's when you take it off the heat. It should still have kind of a, a chew to it, you know, not a crunch, but a chew. Um, so I've got the, uh, the cup of rice here that I've um, cooked and cooled in this bowl. Now, um, we're going to um, start to make these pancakes. And what I want you to do is put three tablespoons of butter in a skillet. And in that, you need to sweat some carrots, three quarters of a cup of carrots. Just like that. <clears throat> and we've also got three quarters of a cup of celery. Both of these, the carrots and the celery, have been finely diced. You've also got a cup of onion, finely chopped. And some scallions, uh, the green part of the scallion, um, a third of a cup of scallion, finely chopped. Alrighty, and uh, some sage as well, three quarters of a teaspoon of dried sage. So I've got some here, let me just pop in about three quarters of a teaspoon, that looks good. And we're going to mix all of this together and, um, and sweat it. <clears throat> I'd say don't sweat it, but I don't mean that. I mean sweat it. And uh, by, to do that, you would cover it and cook over medium heat for about 10 minutes. We just want to soften these. We don't necessarily want to brown these. All right, let me put the cover on that. See that 10 minutes later. Meanwhile, I have the, um, the stuff that's already sweated, and it's right here. <clears throat> these are the vegetables already softened in the bowl, and I'm going to add this to the bowl of rice. There you go. Incorporate that, mix together thoroughly and evenly. Okay, now to give this pancake some heft, here's what you do. You've got uh, two large eggs in a bowl, going to beat. And to this, I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of milk. And now the egg mixture gets added to the rice mixture. 
And also, of course, we're going to need some flour. So I've got one cup of all-purpose flour ready to blend in. Okay, here's the flour. Mix it in. And, you know, I mean, this is really pretty simple. Uh, what you need to do is just get a, um, well, it'd be great if you had a griddle. I've got one ready to go. Get a, a griddle ready for cooking. Um, <clears throat> also, to this mixture, you should taste it and season it to taste with salt and pepper. Add a little bit of salt here. <clears throat> a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. I actually like it a little bit on the, on the peppery side. It seems to go nicely with the nutty taste of the rice. <clears throat> okay, and this is your, this is your pancake mixture. <clears throat> Get all that flour blended in. And now you see my, uh, I've got my griddle over here, and I've got a little bit of just vegetable oil that I'm going to grease the griddle with. Now, for each pancake, um, it's, it's hard to make large pancakes with this because they're kind of like, um, you know, they're so solid. They've got so much stuff in them that they're not going to spread out very easily in the pan. So what I'm doing with this is I'm making pretty uh, small pancakes. That is, I take about a quarter of a cup out of the batter mixture. <clears throat> and then we're going to put this on the griddle. And what you want to do is flatten it out. Okay, bring it together. It's going to congeal together as it cooks. There you go. There's a nice one. Um, and that just takes uh, two to three minutes on each side. It gets nice and golden brown. And this amount will make about 18 uh, three-inch pancakes. That's perfect. It's just about three inches. Alrighty, um, here's what they look like when they're cooked. Aren't they nice? Let me just, let's play with them for a moment. Uh, so I can show you the texture and what it looks like. See how it's just, it's just held together nicely. They're not, as you can see, they're not excessively flowery. flowery. What they are mostly is, um, you know, they're built of that wild rice and it's got a wonderful nutty flavor, which is emphasized by the sort of golden brownness on the outside. It's really, it's really a good thing. Um, now, once you have these, you could top with uh, a million different things. Um, both for appetizer possibilities and for main course possibilities. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to uh, just show you very quickly this little improv that I did. It's basically uh, a duck and game sauce topping. And um, I, I sauteed some shallots, and I added some red wine to the shallots, and I cooked it down heavily, also with some spices in there, like uh, cloves and uh, allspice and whole black peppercorns. Then when it was nicely reduced, you could hardly see the wine anymore, I added some great dark game stock to it. And then I cooked that for about an hour and reduced the game stock. And here's what you have back here. Doesn't that look good? I tell you, it tastes great also. Uh, and then what you want to do at the last moment is um, monter au beurre. You want to mount it with butter. And I've got some little pieces of cold butter that I'm going to whisk into the very hot sauce. And of course, you know, when you add butter like this to a sauce at the very end, it just gives it this wonderful um, velvety sheen. And you could do as much as your cardiologist will allow. And then when the sauce is mounted, you don't want it to really boil at that point because the butter will start to uh, tr get oily and trail off in the sauce. You just you want it to hold in and be sort of mounted and glossy, not oily and buttery. Then, look at this. I've taken a duck breast, a magre du canal, of a big fat duck, and I've uh, sauteed it in butter, uh, and then uh, just to sort of brown it on the outside, and then roasted it in a very hot oven for a couple moments until it was just, I can feel that it's just rare inside, lightly scored across the top, as you can see. Um, and in a moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice it, I'm going to lay it across a plate of wild rice pancakes, and I'm going to top that with my mounted game sauce, and uh, we're going to be in wild rice heaven, so come back and see it. Look what's cooking on cable for you. Debbie 
Fields of Mrs. Fields Cookies is serving up some of the most mouth-watering recipes you've ever tasted. From cookies and cakes to pies and tarts, Debbie's creations range from the simple to the simply spectacular. So indulge in TV's most sinful half hour, The Dessert Show, weeknights on the TV Food Network. That's what's cooking on cable for you. Every night at 8.30. Hi, I'm Joy Mangano and I invented the Miracle Mop. It's the original cotton self-wringing mop, therefore the most absorbent. It will clean that mess again and again and again. And I'm Jane Rudolph Tracy, host on QVC, where we have sold over 300,000 mops to people all across the country just like you. In fact, let's hear from some of them. Hi, you're on the air. I love your mop. It's, it's been a lifesaver. This mop is wonderful. I, I would tell anybody to buy it. You can take it into the bathtub, up the shower stall, behind the commode. And after all that messy cleaning, this is the only mop of its kind, you're so smart, <laughs> that you can put into the washing machine with bleach and it comes out germ-free. I can't say enough about them. They're wonderful. It cuts my time in half. Why don't you give us a call? Our operators are standing by. Have your credit card ready and call 1-800-500-0162. The original Miracle Mop really will be the last mop you'll ever have to buy. Call 1-800-500-0162. 1-800-500-0162. Call now. Now, kid, be cool. You just give this stuff to your best buddies. Tell your friends it's a great high. You tell them it can't hurt them. I can do that. Just give it away. And you see who comes back for more. And then I start charging. You're a smart kid. You have a good day at school, Billy boy. That's what I did. I sat my son down, explained it to him. Simple, uncomplicated. Uh, uh. At first, I didn't know what he was talking about. I just took authority, you know what I'm saying? He was nervous and sweaty. I was thinking, you know, what's this all about? You know, they got questions, you uh, just answer them. <laughs> well, well, look, it, for, uh... If you need help talking to your kids about drugs, call for this free book. she is oh man doesn't that look good now I've got I'm gonna nap it with this sauce which is nicely mounted with the butter just pour it around and um, I'll just pour a little bit on top of the duck look at those nice thick slices of duck fresh sage garnish uh, it looks good enough to eat folks and that's what I intend to do um, now let me just tell you about a few choices I made here I could have had I wanted to added something traditional like red currant jelly to this gamey sauce. But um, I chose not to because we're so sort of conditioned to thinking of wild rice with something sweet. Actually, one nice thing to put in it is sour dried cherries. Um, but always, you know, it's at that Thanksgiving Christmas table with sweet stuff all around. And you, you tend to think that it wouldn't survive in a purely savory situation. Well, I've created a purely savory situation. Uh, there's no sweet stuff in here, and you know what? The wild rice tastes just as good when it doesn't have a, a sweet side dish or some kind of sweet component. Um, another good thing about having no sweetness in, in the dish is that it opens up the range for red wines. If there's a little bit of sweetness in a dish, you know it's probably a good idea to have a little bit of sweetness in the wine. Otherwise, the sweetness in the dish will make the wine taste very thin and mean and acidic and sour. But there's no sweetness in this dish. That means that I can use dry red wines, which would be best with uh, game anyway. And since this is a very American thing, we do have here this wild rice, which um, is grown in this country, which is um, savored in this country. By the way, did you know that people like it all around the world? It's especially popular in Europe. Um, where they don't have any of their own, but it's thought of as one of the great exotic American exports, wild rice. Um, but this is American, so we're going to serve an American wine. Um, and with this, I wouldn't want anything that, you know, with a rare duck breast like this, I don't like to serve wines that are like too powerful, too forceful. So something like California Cabernet is right out of the question. I like the greater lightness of Pinot Noir with a dish like this. Now, there's some terrific California Pinot Noirs, and um, I thought about that. But generally speaking, the Pinot Noirs that are made north of there in Oregon are more delicate. And I've picked a very lovely, delicate one called a Christum, which comes from the Willamette Valley, which is just south of Portland, Oregon. 
and uh, I think this will do very nicely with the duck. Yeah, you can see from the color of it. You see, it's sort of—it's not like ink. Uh, you can almost see. Can you see my finger? You can almost see through it. There you go. Okay. So let's um, let's dig in here. Oh man, and I love the little bit of crunchy duck skin on the outside. Let me get a little bit of the wild rice pancake. Wow. That is seriously good food. Make this dish, okay? Any time of year. Don't have to wait for the holiday. Delicious wine match. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we covered a lot of ground on wild rice. Come back, see me again next time. And remember, life is a matter of taste. Bye-bye. Coming through. Next, Cooking Classics with Julia Child, the grand dame of American cooking. Then, more cooking.